Welcome to Chem 525, Metabolism and its Regulation. This semester I wanted to start with just a short video giving you an overview of human metabolism so you can see the big picture of where we're going with this course. In the past we've just dived into biological molecules and straight into the TCA cycle, but where does this fit in metabolism and what are we learning? So here's some definitions. You can read them here, uh, my definitions, or more detailed ones in your book. But essentially, metabolism means to change things. Sometimes we change large macromolecules into smaller bits and we make energy out of them. Sometimes we build up other metabolites from small building blocks. And so the, the process of breaking down molecules to produce energy is catabolism. And anabolism is the biosynthesis. Here's a little pictorial representation of this. Um, anabolic reactions always require energy, and these smaller molecules can be built into larger things that our body needs. For example, we can take um, five-membered sugars and build them up into nucleic acids via the pentose phosphate pathway. Um, in catabolic reactions, which we'll focus a lot on in this course, we're going to be taking larger molecules, breaking them down, and producing the energy required for the body to do some of this anabolism as well. So this you're not supposed to be able to see very well. This is the most comprehensive metabolic map to date. It's called Recon2, and it is a collaboration of biologists and computational biologists to use the map of the genome to create this pretty complete, to our knowledge to date, metabolic map. And you can see it's huge. So we'll never get into all of this in this course, but it's important to know that there's all this background stuff going on, and uh, advances in technology just allow us to appreciate this a little bit more. For us, we'll be focusing on the major catabolic pathways. How do we eventually come to the electron transport chain and make lots and lots of ATP, lots and lots of energy? Well, central to this is the citric acid cycle, or TCA cycle, tricarboxylic acid cycle, and a bunch of pathways where we take in our nutrients feed into the TCA cycle. The TCA cycle connects to the electron transport chain, which produces energy, and connects to a bunch of biosynthetic pathways as well, as do many of these pathways. Carbohydrates can be broken down eventually into glucose, which we convert via glycolysis into pyruvic acid, and this can enter the TCA cycle through acetyl-CoA. You can see this molecule, this metabolite, acetyl-coenzyme A, is present in a lot of the pathways. Lipids get broken down into fatty acids, which can undergo the beta-oxidation pathway, producing units of acetyl-coenzyme A as fatty acids are chopped off two pieces at a time, two carbon units at a time. So those are two of the major ones we'll look at. We will also look at what happens to proteins. Proteins get broken down into amino acids, make the pool of nitrogen, which can also feed into forming acetyl-coenzyme A. Excess nitrogen can also be processed through the urea cycle, which can break down amino acids, but also builds up um, a lot of necessary amino acids that we need along the way, and so this is um, involved in biosynthesis as well. So um, this is a slide that I prepared for a younger audience. So you'll see sugar storage instead of like glycogen production here. But I kind of like these uh, simpler terms. But we can see how um, glucose breakdown through glycolysis is happening here. And this directly connects into this anabolic sugar pathway, which is actually the pentose phosphate pathway, which allows us to make nucleic acids. Here we see our central point, our TCA cycle. And we can see fatty acid breakdown pathways, fatty acid synthesis pathways. And here we get a, a little bit of a flavor for how aspartate can come in. We can produce fumarate. This is showing us some of the connect, interconnectedness of these cycles. So we have a lot of shared metabolites here. A lot is going on at once. I really like this anabolic map because it shows you just a few of the structures, unique structures that can be built up by an organism's metabolism. Now, in some cases, we don't build everything. Um, 
you know, in these pathways where a, a certain organism might not build up everything, sometimes plants can make really complex natural products that we can use as medicines. Um, the benefit to the plant for that compound is not always known or its importance in the plant's metabolism, but um, different organisms make really unique structures and you can see we have these a lot of heterocycles being made. Our nucleotides are heterocycles too. That just means we have something other than carbon in a ring. You can see all how all the steroids branch off from here. And really this just gives such a nice structural representation of our metabolism. So we saw two slides ago that we have some shared metabolites, actually a lot of shared metabolites. And so how can all of these metabolic processes be going on at one time? Well, one answer to this is sometimes processes take place in different organelles. So here we see little mitochondria, and that's where our electron transport chain primarily takes place. In the cytosol, we have um, glycolysis going on. We also have gluconeogenesis going on. So glycolysis is the breakdown of glucose, and gluconeogenesis is the opposite of that, the building up of pyruvate to make glucose de novo in the body. And so how can those, those are both taking place in the cytosol. How can those be going on at the same time? And that's where we get into the regulation part of this course. We're going to see that products produced metabolites along the way can regulate enzymes in different ways and allow for one process to selectively occur even though the other could possibly be going on. And so we'll look at a lot of enzyme regulation in this course. I'd like to just conclude with one of my favorite metabolic metro maps, so a metro style map. Um, this one is a great size for printing and also to maybe make as your computer desktop if you want to be inspired daily by the complexity of what's going on in our body. Welcome to Chem 525. Great to have you in the course.